All right, so let's look at these next couple of examples. So in this example three, part A and B, it says solve and check. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna rewrite, let's see. So let's look at part A. So it says solvent check. So what I'm going to do is start by rewriting the original. Um, 5P plus 4 times 3 minus 2P equals 2 plus P minus 10. Okay. So again, if we follow that step by step that we had on the last slide, <clears throat> uh, we're first charged with get rid of any um, fractions or decimals which we don't have any so then uh, next I would actually do order of operations here now I did mention please excuse my Daron Sally's last request so last time um, but that's what I would do here for instance we have this 4 I would distribute it into the parentheses okay so now when we do this the 5p comes down uh, 4 times 3 is 12 4 times the negative 2 is negative 8p. And then on the right, we can combine like terms. So we have p, we got 2 plus a negative 10 is negative 8. Now on the left, we're combining like terms. So 5 plus a negative 8 is negative 3 plus 12. Then I bring it down my equal sign and then p minus 8. So now we want to isolate our variable. Um, I'm a fan of getting the variable on the left and other terms on the right. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move the variable first. I'm going to subtract p and subtract p. Now there's more than one way to do this. So on the left, we'll get negative 4p plus 12. And on the right, it's negative 8. So now we want to move our constant term. So subtract 12 from both sides of the equal sign. This cancels. Then we have a negative 4p. And that's going to be a negative 20. So then divide by negative 4. equals 5. Okay. And then just check it in the original. So you just want to be able to plug it in. When you plug it into the original, you should you should you should finish with a true statement. So the left, once you plug it in, the left is going to be equal to the right. It should make sense. Okay. Let's go ahead and do B. So I'm going to do the same thing. I start by rewriting the original. So 3z minus 2 plus 5z equals 2. I'm going to essentially do the same thing. So I'll distribute the 3. So then that becomes 3z minus 6 plus 5z equals 2. On the left, I can combine like terms. 5, 3z plus 5z is 8z minus 6 equals 2. I can add 6 to both sides. Cancel get 8z equals 8, and then divide both sides by 8, so this gets divided by 8, and this gets divided by 8, and then we get z equals 1. Now, if we plug it into the original, we would say 1 minus 2 is a negative 1, times 3 is negative 3, plus 5 is indeed 2, so it checks out.
for this example four, uh, I will work in this space. So I'll work in that space here. And let's see if we can get that same result. So it says solve and check. So since it says solve, that means it should be an equation. Uh, so this is A. Uh -oh. Okay, so A. Uh, we have 2 times 2x two plus 1 minus 3 times 2x minus 1 should equal 9. Okay. So, you know, hopefully. Are you able to kind of look ahead a bit? Oh, sorry. You'll be able to look ahead a bit and, um, you know, try to work it for yourself and then see if your technique is similar or matches mine. So first thing I would do here is distribute the 2 and distribute the negative 3. Okay, so then 2 times 2 is, uh, is going to be 4x plus 2 minus 6x plus 3 equals 9. Now on the left, let's combine like terms. We got a 4x plus a negative 6x gives us a negative 2x. 2 plus 3 gives us 5. So then, subtract 5, subtract 5. Let's cancel. We get negative 2x equals 4. Divide by negative 2 and divide by negative 2. X should equal negative 2, which is what we have there. Okay, so then we will check. You just plug it into the original, and once you simplify it, the left should equal the right. Look at this next example. So for A, we have uh, 2p over 7 minus p over 2 equals a negative 3. Okay. So now this one we do have uh, fractions and or decimals to get rid of. We have fractions. So then the first question, it says, it says to get rid of the fraction, we multiply the left and the right by the LCD. Take a brief moment to see if you can identify the LCD or the least common denominator. In this case, the LCD, least common denominator, it should also be the least common multiple. So one technique, especially since we just have numbers and no variables in the denominator, we can take the largest number, which is indeed, which is seven in this case, and then we can ask ourselves, okay, is, um, is seven, is 7 a multiple of itself? Yes. Is 7 a multiple of 2? No. So then we go back to 7 and we multiply by 2. Now, so we say 14. Is 14 a multiple of 7? Yes. Is 14 a multiple of 2? Yes. So then what we can say is that the LCD in this case is going to be 14. So if we multiply the left and the right by 14, so what I mean by that, we're going to say this times 14 and this times 14. Okay. 
Now on the left, we have to distribute to do it properly. Okay. So then what we'll have, we'll have um, 14 there, 14 there, and then the rest of this stuff is in region. And then 3 times 14 is 30, plus 12 is a negative 42. Okay. Here. So now if we have 14 divided by 7, the 7 turns the 14 into a 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So now we have 2 times 2 is 4p minus 7p equals a negative 42. 4 plus a negative 7 is negative 3p equals a negative 42. And then divide both sides by a negative 3. And we get p equals 14. Again, we would check by plugging into the original to make sure that it, check, it works out. I'm going to leave that as an exercise. I'm just not doing it for the sake of time, but you definitely want to do that. That's where most of the points come from in mathematics. Once you're done, you know, you... Um, you take the time to ask yourself, does this make sense? If this is true, what should be the case? You know, so this this kind of thinking.